The people in charge of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant have another problem on their hands. They say they found water pouring into a drain inside a reactor building. Officials at Tokyo Electric Power Company say they don't know where the water is coming from and they're not sure how much radioactive material it contains. Workers spotted the leak on the first floor of the Reactor 3 building in video footage from a remote-controlled robot. They say it's about 30 centimeters wide and constant. TEPCO officials say the water is probably flowing toward the basement. A large amount of radioactive water has accumulated there. The officials say rainwater may have gotten into the building. Radiation levels are too high for workers to approach the site, so officials are trying to find the source of the leak by analyzing the video footage. The people in charge of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have been investigating a leak inside a reactor building. They suspect water has been escaping from an opening in the containment vessel inside reactor number 3. Officials with Tokyo Electric Power Company first discovered the leak on Saturday. A remote-controlled camera captured images of water flowing through the first floor of the reactor building. The officials say the water is highly radioactive. That suggests it's the same water used to cool melted nuclear fuel inside the reactor. TEPCO officials suspect the water is leaking from an opening in the containment vessel that holds a steam pipe. They said extra space around the opening had been tightly sealed with resin. But the material has been exposed to heat from the melted fuel as well as seawater pumped into the vessel immediately after the nuclear accident in March 2011. Officials say the heat and salt water may have deteriorated the resin. TEPCO engineers have been planning to remove the melted fuel from the reactor, a key step toward dismantling the plant. To do that, they need to find out where the containment vessel is damaged and repair it. But they can't enter, enter the reactor building because of high radiation. So they'll look for other ways to address the problem. Workers head into Fukushima Daiichi day after day to tackle a long list of problems. Highly trained teams will spend the rest of the year removing fuel rods from the reactor for building at the nuclear plant. But operator Tokyo Electric Park Company is still trying to deal with an issue that gets worse with every passing minute. NHK World's Noriko Okada has more on the buildup of contaminated water. Lake Barrett is a former U.S. nuclear regulator. He led the decommissioning of a damaged reactor following the Three Mile Island accident. Barrett is currently working as an advisor to Tokyo Electric Power Company. He says TEPCO's top priority is to lay out a clear plan this year for solving the contaminated water problem at Fukushima Daiichi. A lot of work ahead of them. Uh, water is a continuing challenge. Control of the contaminated water is a very complex matter because it's a very complicated site with groundwater movements. Groundwater becomes tainted hour after hour at the plant. It seeps into the damaged reactor buildings and mixes with melted fuel. Workers pump up about 400 tons of it every day. All they can do is store it in tanks. About 1,000 containers dot the site. And TEPCO officials plan to build more. They are cooperating with the Japanese government to take drastic measures to stop the build-up. They plan to surround reactor buildings and other facilities with pipes and then pumping refrigerants to build a kind of ice wall. They believe this will keep fresh groundwater out. Underground tunnels are another problem. Engineers also plan to stop highly contaminated water from seeping into the sea via those tunnels. In this case, they plan to block the flow of tainted water from reactor buildings by freezing the entrances of the tunnels. Workers will again drive pipes into the ground and pump refrigerants into them. That would freeze the contaminated water within a few weeks. Once the tunnels are blocked, crews will then clear them of tainted water. TEPCO officials also need to figure out how to dispose of the contaminated water that's building up in the storage tanks. 
crews had to clean up a number of spills from the tanks last year. They've been trying to decontaminate the water with a system called ALPS. It can remove most radioactive substances. Plant managers want to take all of the substances out of the water by March 2015. But ALPS is unreliable and frequently stops operating. Experts warn that if engineers can't tackle the contaminated water issue, they will further delay the decommissioning process. That job is expected to take 30 to 40 years. Noriko Okada, NHK World. Crews at Japan's damaged nuclear plant get started on a crucial job later in the day. They'll be working to stop some radioactive wastewater from flowing into the Pacific Ocean by freezing the mouths of underground tunnels. Managers of Fukushima Daiichi pour tons of water daily into the facility's crippled reactors to cool nuclear fuel. Some of the water mixes with radioactive substances and leaks from containment vessels. It accumulates in the reactor buildings, adjacent turbine buildings and the tunnels. Engineers with operator Tokyo Electric Power Company believe the water seeps from the tunnels into the ground and reaches the sea. They've mapped out a plan to create frozen walls underground at reactors number two and three. Crews will start by digging vertical holes where the tunnels meet the turbine buildings. They'll install pipes into the holes and inject liquid coolant to create frozen walls to block the flow of water. But cables and other objects in the tunnel could hamper the work. Engineers can't enter the areas because the water is so highly contaminated. So they'll rely on images sent from remote-controlled cameras. Managers hope to finish installing the pipes by late March. Then, once the frozen walls are complete, they plan to start removing 11,000 tons of tainted water in May. Local residents and people in charge of the nuclear facility north of Fukushima Daiichi have held an evacuation drill based on a nuclear disaster striking the plant. It's the first such practice to be held since the Fukushima meltdowns in 2011. The exercise assumed that radioactive substances were released from the Onagawa plant of Tohoku Electric Power Company after a major earthquake knocked out all power. The plant lies about 100 kilometers north of Fukushima Daiichi. Participants included about 800 people from the Miyagi prefectural government, seven municipalities, hospitals and police and fire stations. Officials also linked up with the Nuclear Regulation Authority Secretariat through video. They shared information about which residents needed to be evacuated or ordered to stay indoors. The town of Misato held a drill in which all residents within 30 kilometers of the plant are ordered to take shelter indoors. I was calm because I knew it was a drill, but I worry how I would react if a real disaster strikes. I'm not sure I could move like I did today. New government guidelines have increased the number of people around the Onagawa plant who will need to evacuate from 18,000 to 210,000. But the safety plans are behind schedule. The municipalities have yet to compile the required evacuation measures. Managers of Japan's crippled Fukushima Daiichi plant watch contaminated water build up every minute of every day. All they can do is remove as many radioactive substances as possible and then store the water in tanks on site. But that's not sustainable. So they're trying to block the flow by going to the source. The problem is workers must constantly inject water into three damaged reactors to cool molten fuel. The water mixes with radioactive materials and becomes contaminated. Then it leaks out and taints the groundwater that flows beneath the compound. Plant managers are trying to pinpoint the leaks, but high radiation levels are getting in their way. And our latest installment on Nuclear Watch looks at how engineers found a way around the hazard. Here's NHK World's Kenichiro Okamoto. A team of engineers entered the Reactor 1 building at Fukushima Daiichi in November. The engineers took a small boat with them. They planned to float it around the reactor containment vessel to trace the source of contaminated water. Months earlier, representatives of major institutions 
such as Hitachi GE, Kyushu Institute of Technology, and the University of Tokyo came together to collaborate on the project. They had a budget of about $3 million. They fitted the boat with a camera capable of transmitting video, and they attached a specially designed cable to control the device. Radiation would have blocked the radio waves used in remote controls. They planned to drop the boat into the area surrounding the containment vessel and record video. But they had limited time to do the work because of high levels of radiation. So they rehearsed in a model of the reactor building. They needed to carefully drop the boat through a complicated piping system. Then they'd be able to do the survey. Once they'd run test after test, they got the go ahead to do the real thing. The team set up at Fukushima Daiichi. They had to work in an area where the radiation level is 5 mSv per hour. They can only stay here for 15 minutes. So the engineers rotated in shifts. The engineers successfully placed the boat alongside the containment vessel. They used the remote control to move it around. The boat sent back a radiation reading of 2,000 mSv per hour. Anyone exposed to that would die in a few hours. The device transmitted these images, showing water flowing down the side of the containment vessel. The camera captured another leak nearby. Contaminated water was gushing out of a broken pipe. Experts analyzed the video and were shocked by what they saw. It will be extremely difficult to pinpoint the leaks. It will all depend on our ability to develop new robots. The space between the metal containment vessel and the concrete that surrounds it is only 5 centimeters. That makes it hard for engineers to get a picture of the clock so they can figure out how to fix it. Managers of Fukushima Daiichi need to find out where radioactive water is coming from in order to proceed with the decommissioning process. But they are facing an uphill battle, one that underscores the difficulties presented by the nuclear crisis. Kenichiro Okamoto, NHK World. And I'll be giving you a more detailed look at the contaminated water issue at Fukushima Daiichi this weekend on NHK World. Don't miss our program, Radioactive Water, Fukushima Daiichi's Hidden Crisis, showing at these times. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant is discovering more damage at the reactor containment vessel. It says it is going to take steps to avoid further contamination in the area. NHK World's Mitsuko Nishikawa reports. Engineers are investigating leaks in several places in the container that holds nuclear fuel. The plant's water circulation system was destroyed in the aftermath of the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. Workers have been injecting more than four tons of water an hour into the vessel to cool the nuclear fuel. In November, crews using a robot equipped with a camera discovered two leaks in the lower part of the containment vessel. They estimate that more than three tons of water may be leaking every hour. The engineers have also learned that more than one ton of water is leaking from elsewhere. They plan to send in the robot again to search for other possible problems. 
They say they'll expand their search to include the suppression chamber linked to the containment vessel. At the same time, workers are trying to contain leaked and leaking radioactive wastewater on the site. In February, they will test how much radioactive strontium, an absorbent material placed underground, can remove from leaked wastewater. Workers will dig a 20-meter deep hole near the leaking tank and bury the absorbent. The measure proved effective at the U.S. nuclear facility. However, some believe it won't be as successful with the salty water that has accumulated at the Fukushima plant. Tokyo Electric plans to assess the test results to decide by late February whether to fully introduce the absorbent. Mitsuko Nishikawa, NHK World.